So first of all, thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for the weekly OTRS Central Q&A video. Good news! Since there were so many questions, I'm splitting it up into two parts. Part one, the first video, is going to be the wrestling themed and related questions. Part two, the second video that you'll see, will be video or questions, excuse me, not pertaining to professional wrestling at all. So this should be fun, but like I said, part one, these are the wrestling related questions. So let's go ahead and tackle them. B.W. Rosas, Brian, my dude, been around a long time just like this cat has. Uh, when did you start hating a certain Memphis mid-card piece of crap? Was it his first WWF run, his first WCW run, his second runs in each places, TNA, when? The very beginning. First WWF run. Nothing about him was appealing. Nothing about him said interesting, compelling, entertaining. Nothing about him said anything other than piece of crap. So this goes back to the mid-90s, first WWF run, because fuck Jeff Jarrett. WNC Podcast starts off. What would be a good non-generic gimmick for a black WWE wrestler, especially since you talk so often about how they give so many of them suspect gay type of gimmicks? It's either that or thuggish type of gimmicks. So let's be fair here. I don't say they only give them that. It seems like they give a lot of them for this, and then the rest of them have to be thugs or this, or they got to be dancing or rapping, or they got to sit there and be acting all types of weird and suspect. You got a couple that could be socially relevant. You could have a uh, Black Lives Matter type of guy, a protest type of guy. I mean, it, it would make sense in a logical way. I talked about before with the New Day, my whole vision and thought for them was they were going to be a modernized version of the new nation of domination, but not be militant like the nation was in the 90s. They were going to be different, talking about we are the future, we're all college educated, we've got degrees, like for Christ's sake, Xavier Woods now has a PhD. They're going to be coming out in suits, acting like they're main event mafia type of stuff. You know, stuff like that. You could have somebody on the flip side. You could have a black conservative character because that could potentially get some heat and then some awkward face love as well. You have a lot of different places you could go other than what they always choose to seem to settle on with these guys. How about just a likable, lovable baby face that happens to be black? Just saying. Michael Corvin. How do you revive the Bray Wyatt character? Step one is keep him off of television for quite a long time. I'm not going to go through all the semantics right now of how I would do it. There might be its own separate video topic. Or if he's back at WrestleMania, then it doesn't fucking matter anyways. Um, if he's not back at WrestleMania or the Raw after WrestleMania and he's gone for a period of time, then I may do a video talk about what I would do with Bray Wyatt going forward. But until then, I'm not going to. Uh, Kieran Chase. How would wrestling, not just WWE, be different if Vince went to jail back in the mid-90s? Um, wrestling as a whole? I think you got to start with WWF. Um, the guy who owned the place would be a convicted felon. be really hard to see the company go public in 99. And depending on how long he would have served in prison... We might never have gotten the Mr. McMahon character, the greatest heel in the history of the professional wrestling business. So certainly the WWF would have been in a much different, weirder, and probably not as good place. Um, who knows what would have happened to the WWF. As far as WCW, honestly, part of their whole shtick was railing against the WWF. And what fun is it to rail against the WWF when the guy in charge, Vince, isn't even there because he's locked up? Um... It would have been a weird place. Paul Lee wouldn't have been getting his subsidized payments from Vince in ECW. So how would have ECW have been? I mean, not like they were paying people anyways, but especially then they really wouldn't have been paying any damn buddy. It would have meant a whole lot of not very good for the wrestling business for sure. And I feel old when I get questions from cats like you that I think are like all of 18 years of age. That means you weren't even alive when the steroid trial happened in the mid-90s. Christ's sakes. I'm old enough to be your dad. And Kieran, uh, we need to talk. Yeah, no, no, I won't even joke about that. I know you just recently lost your father, and I know it's tough and all. I'm just saying in general that it is weird that I am old enough to be your dad.
anyways, I hope everything's going well with you, by the way. Yeah, because that's, that's a rough deal. Similar to Sala Monster losing uh, the Mama Monster recently. Guys, go show Kieran some love, too, because that's never easy, losing a parent like that, um, especially when you're not that old. You know, just as you get ready to go into adulthood and begin your adult life, then one of those guiding principles, those guiding lights of your life is now gone. That's no fun. That sucks. So, um, but to answer your question more bluntly, the wrestling business would have been entirely different and not in a good way. Ashwin, why is Vince so hesitant to turn Roman and Cena heel when even guys like Rock, Austin, and Hogan all turned heel at some point in time at the height of their careers? Now, let's backtrack here for a second. A couple of things. One, Hogan went to WCW and turned heel. Entirely different. As soon as Hogan came back to WWF in 2002, he was heel for a split second and then was back to being a babyface again. It was a tougher dynamic. As far as Rock in Austin, this is also the phase of their careers where Austin, when he came to 2001, he had no more WCW. Vince felt like they needed to do something else. And fuck it, it didn't matter now because they had won the battle. They had won the war so they could just turn Austin heel. 2003, with The Rock, he was already in Hollywood. He wasn't going to be around all the time, so why not do something different with him? I think it's also a different mindset, different mentality of the company at the time versus now. They're really protective in terms of the guys that they use as their props, the guys that they use as their so-called top dogs. Um, but especially at this stage of Cena's career, he should have been healed because the merch sales shouldn't matter anymore. It should be about helping other guys to sell merch and helping the company go forward and, frankly, getting a longer shelf life on Cena, he should have been turned heel in the past two years. I completely agree with that assessment because he's acting like a jerk half the damn time on television anyways. Why not have him paid to be a jerk all the time? Because if you thought heel rock was something, heel Cena could be something otherworldly. That said, you also wonder, though, with Cena, with Roman, if more than half the audience is booing them on a consistent basis, then... Aren't they already kind of heels any damn ways? I mean, because you're in a really squirrely place with WWE and have been for years where the heroes are the villains and the villains are the heroes because it's the heroes that are the obstacle. They don't overcome obstacles. They are the obstacle. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get it, especially with Cena. Especially with Cena at this point because you've already got Roman as your golden child now. It shouldn't matter as much what you do with Cena. I understand with him doing the... Um, Today Show and other stuff that maybe Cena doesn't want to do it, but if there was ever a time to do something different with Cena's character, it would have been the past two years, and it would be going forward. Uh, Stone Jones, if Nia Jax wasn't fat or related to The Rock, would she be in WWE? You, you, what? Really? Really? You would think her being related to The Rock. She would be the one that was a four or five time women's champion, not somebody like God dang Sasha Banks. I don't know where the hell this question really came from, honestly. If she wasn't fat or related to The Rock, why would the WWE want her because she was fat? Are you saying she is the token fat girl? Damn shame then that she looks better than most of the women's roster, that's for damn sure. I mean, how many of these other women on the roster could you sit there and say, Oh, they only signed it because they look like a dude. Or they only signed it because they were blonde. You know, or this or that. So, yeah, I think she would still be in WWE. Charles Mitchell. Why did Taker Hogan never have a good feud or match? Yeah, they never really did, did they? I just, they, I think they were always an odd fit. Like, anything that Taker did, whether as the heel dead man in the early 90s or as biker Taker in the 2002 time frame, it just didn't really mesh with what Hogan was about. And it just, it didn't work. Part of it, I think, was that Taker was a really athletic big guy and Hogan wasn't used to working with really athletic big guys like Taker. So it just threw off the kind of the dynamics of how they would set up matches. And sometimes stuff just doesn't work. And yeah, those are one of those cases where they just didn't work. Uh, Funaki is God. Which WrestleMania was better? WrestleMania 20 or WrestleMania 10? 
WrestleMania 10 had Brett versus Owen. WrestleMania 10 had Razor versus Shawn Michaels in the ladder match. WrestleMania 10 had Yoko versus Brett in the main event. WrestleMania 20 gave you a mediocre uh, match between Kane and The Undertaker after the awesome return of The Undertaker and Paul Bear. Undertake, or WrestleMania 20, excuse me, one of its highlights was John Cena picking up the big show for an FU to win the U.S. title. When you also look at WrestleMania 20, yeah, Eddie retained over Kurt, um, but you have the terrible Lesnar-Goldberg match that's historically all-time WrestleMania bad. Just god-awful on so many different levels. Thank God they came back at WrestleMania 33 and had the match that they should have had at 20. Uh, and then, I suppose the most fascinating thing of all was how the Invisible Man beat uh, God and Shawn in order to win the World Heavyweight Championship. I'll take WrestleMania 10. A thank you. I don't know if it was that close. I thought WrestleMania 20 was just kind of a middle-of-the-road show. I thought WrestleMania 10 was better. Uh, the King. What's more fun, embracing wrestling or shitting all over it? How about embracing it by shitting all over it? Um, I think both of them can be fun in their own ways. It can be fun to embrace the good things, embrace the fun things about professional wrestling, and frankly, sometimes it can be fun shitting all over it. So I think it depends. I think it depends. Uh, Alex Dredge. Who was the better wrestler, Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart? Shawn Michaels. And I hate even answering this goddamn question because it's going to set off a whole storm in the comments, and it has for years and will continue to set it off for years. Shawn Michaels was a more versatile performer. Shawn Michaels was vastly superior as a character. He was vastly superior as a talker. Um... Now, that said, the most interesting either one of these two have ever been to me was 1997 Team Canada Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels can eat shit. Nothing Shawn did in a year to me ever measured up to Bret in 97. Nothing. But overall body of work, overall talent, give me Shawn Michaels. Alexander, will Roman Reigns retain the title till at least SummerSlam? It would be really odd. For Lesnar to have carried the strap for a year, for Roman Reigns to then not carry it for at least a year, to at least, if nothing else, get past the 434-day mark of CM Punk. It'd be really odd if they didn't do that. It really would be. You never know with WWE, um, but it would be really, really odd if he didn't hold it till at least SummerSlam and longer. Jeff Schlegel Jr., who has more miles on them? The Undertaker or Stormy Daniels? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, Stormy? Taker's got a lot of mileage on him, too. <laughs> the King. Do you think wrestling will ever get another boom period? Yeah, I don't know about all that. I really don't. Because people could talk about that it's coming and it's happening, but you look at the, like the territory days of the 60s and the 70s, they were pretty good. Then by the time you got to the mid-80s, you had another boom period. Then you got to the late 90s, another boom period. We've been waiting almost 20 damn years for another boom period. My point being is this is about as long as we've ever gone without a true boom period in professional wrestling. Now that said, I think the independent scene is doing as well as it ever has. Because people are disenfranchised by the mainstream WWE product, they're going to the independent shows and the secondary companies. Um, so I think it kind of depends on your perspective. From an independent territory standpoint, it's pretty good. It's actually very good. Um, but yeah, boom period for the entire industry as a whole, I'm not seeing it. Cyrus Suffer, Will The Undertaker face Cena as the dead man or as biker taker? And what version do you want? It wouldn't have made much sense for him to put all of his gear in the ring and stuff to come back as the dead man at 34. And there's a big part of me that says even if he answers Cena's challenge on Monday that we might not actually see Taker and we might not see Taker until he rides out his bike at WrestleMania. Um, so that's where I would lean more so towards. As far as what version do I want? I want the version of The Undertaker that either watches it in the stands or watches at home. I want retired fan Undertaker at WrestleMania, not active wrestler Undertaker. Uh, Eaton Beaver, who has the more interesting writing and characters, WWE or Pornhub? Pornhub. 
is this close? Just saying. Mason Clark. What happens first? Bray Wyatt pays that child support or Dolph Ziggler gets a main event push? It's Bray Wyatt and it's not close because Dolph Ziggler in no way, shape, or form is getting a main event push. They didn't pay him for that. They paid him to be their uh, smile nice jobber bitch. Bray Wyatt's going to pay that child support one way or another because the court's going to order him to. And if he doesn't choose to cooperate, then they will do a little thing called garnish his paycheck and he won't have a fucking choice. So it is Bray Wyatt paying that child support. Bray, you better pay. Better hope to God your pullout game is strong with JoJo because that bitch is going to take you to the cleaners. Just saying. And then Ashwin closes us off with one more question. Your take on The Rock's Hollywood heel run in 2003. I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome. It was arguably some of the best work The Rock did in his entire career. I mean, it was just the right person with the right idea, the right gimmick, the right character at the right time. I loved Hollywood Rock in 2003. It's something I wish they would have patterned a late in his career John Cena after. He could have done it differently, but there still could have been elements that were very similar, and it really would have worked. But yeah, him in 2003, like it was kind of matching the reality too. Like The fans were starting to realize that Rock's not going to be there forever. Rock is going Hollywood, so why not act that way? Why not be somebody that the people can hate because they feel like he's selling out and turning his back to go do the movies and become a movie star? It was genius. It was great. It was an awesome character. And I love that run of his in 2003. Especially that little mini feud between him and Hurricane leading up to Rock and Austin at 19. That little mini feud between him and Hurricane was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Loved every bit of it. And always, once a year, I go back and try to watch a couple of those old clips. I got my Hurra Powers, biatch! <laughs> <laughs> so yes, awesome character, loved it. But anyways, that's it for this Q&A. Remember, part two is coming up soon, the non-wrestling questions, and that should be something.